book of James. Is that the Lord? <laughs> I need to check and see who all's here. Amen. Y'all there? Did they, they all get there? Amen. Well, James in chapter 2, we've uh, been in a really uh, uh, just, yeah, there's one back there. Well, let's see if we can get that. James chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 14. James chapter 2 and uh, verse 14. It says, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and hath not works, can faith save him? So, we're, we're dealing with this uh, passage. We, we've actually, this is kind of a, I would say somewhat of a familiar passage. You know, it's something that, uh, if you get in church very long, you kind of you get used. You know, this is kind of a phrase, and maybe uh, there's certain um, uh, snippets of of verses that we use a lot because it, it has a little message to it, a little succinct or you know a quick, short message. And so we'll kind of a lot of times we'll we'll go to these things and we'll. Um, uh, but but I want to just sometimes what I find when we. We use that, we, we talk about it, and then when we unfold it a little bit, what's it really dealing with is sometimes a little bit different. It kind of helps us to what, take it, put it back in context, you know, if we'd say that. that. And so we, we began this last week, and so I'm going to do a little bit of review from last week of what we talked about. He said, you know, what comes out, so the first thing, what comes out reveals what's inside, okay? What comes out of the mouth reveals what was in the heart, right? It's out of the issues of the heart that comes thing. It's, it's, not the, it's not the mouth that actually just like the mouth has its... Sometimes, you know, we think, you know, I, I mentioned, I think last week, or maybe it was Wednesday, I said my mom used to tell me, your mouth's going to get you in trouble, right? I think that was Wednesday night I said that. Uh, you know, our mouth isn't really what's getting us in trouble. It's our heart, right? And it's coming out of that mouth. It's so, so, but also other, it's not just that way. Uh, what comes out of our life, reveals what's in our life. And so we find here a passage that's dealing with something that has, happen, has been happening in Christianity from the beginning. Okay, This isn't a new thing. There's something that's been happening from the beginning, and that is this, this thing of a false profession. Okay, A false profession. Um, salvation is a personal um, transaction between God and the sinner. Right? It's personal. It's, it's not a... Uh, it's, it's not something that we, we, we do for somebody or they do for us. It's between, it's between you and God alone. If you're saved here this morning, it's because you, you've made a decision between you and the Lord, right? It wasn't between you, me, and the Lord, right? Now, maybe, maybe somebody helped you with that. You know, a lot of times we say, you know, my, my, my mom saved me, right? Or my dad saved me, or the preacher saved me. We'll say that. Really what we're saying is they helped me, right? But the transaction wasn't a three-way transaction between God and I alone, right? That's why I said, I know I'm saved, um, and I can sometimes, we'll, I'd say, you know, I don't know about you, <laughs> but I know about me. Now, sometimes we can know about others in a way, we'll see that in a bit, but um, the evidence of salvation is found in the fruit that's produced um, by the one that's, that's professed Christ. That's how we see there's, there's fruit. Uh, now, now, keep your place there. We're, we're mostly not going to be back here too much, but turn over to Luke chapter 6. Um, Luke chapter 6, sometimes we have, to, we have to leave where we're at to understand what we're trying to unfold there. And so I want to, uh, listen, the Bible isn't, um, it isn't standalone letters like the epistles. They're not stand, the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they're not standalone. You know, we go, James, you know, these, they're not, the Revelation, they're not stand, it's, it's, it's all together, right? It's a, it's a, it's a collection, and this is all of God's revelation all together to us. So sometimes we got to, there's some information that it's assumed that we already know because it's already been written, right? You understand what I'm saying? 
So when we're, we find it over here in the book of James, there's some other information and truths and understanding that God realized that we have. And so that's why we kind of sometimes we'll, we'll go back and forth through this thing and look and go back and, and, and get some of that. Luke chapter 6, verse 43. The Bible says, For a good tree bringeth forth, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So he's talking about in the negative aspect. So, so a, a good tree does not bring forth corrupt fruit. Neither does a, a, a corrupt tree. It doesn't bring forth the good fruit. So he's given us a, a, an understanding of how, how trees work. The Lord is an arborist. I mean, he created the, the trees. So, so he's telling us about trees, and he wants us to know so we can know. He's giving us an illustration, right? We see that verse 44. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of bramble uh, bush gather they grapes. So, go, Of course, he's going on the same thing. And the Lord often does this. He develops this illustration. You ever feel like preachers kind of chase these illustrations a little long? They're like, man, he's really unfolding that thing. The Lord did the same thing. I'm just trying to be like him. Amen. And so we, we unfold this illustration. He's saying, hey, listen, we don't, we don't, get, we don't get figs from a bush, right? We, we, don't, we, we get this, listen, that's not the way uh, uh, it doesn't work. We, we, every, every tree brings forth its own fruit. That's kind of, you know, you don't, get, you don't get oranges off an apple tree and so forth. You know, I mean, we don't have an apple and orange tree. You know, it's not one tree that has both. It's just kind of giving us this, by the way, this is obvious, Right? He's telling people, when he was telling people weren't like, wow, that's amazing. No, he was telling them what they already knew, right? He deals with, we have this thing, we're going to look at it, we're going to look at it a little bit in the next hour to follow, but we, we have, God gave us something that's um, this, this thing in our mind, so our mind works in a way that we can grab normal information. But the Lord is saying, you already understand this, right? Now look at verse 45. So now he changes it, and, and he, he uses that illustration, verse 45, a good man. Now he's going to show this concept. He's a good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For, out, uh, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So he, he's dealing with now, I've told you these things, you understand how a tree works and how fruit works. It's the same thing. Same thing with man. Well, you know, it's just different. I know, I know we, we do this, but I really mean well. Right? You ever, you ever said that or heard, you heard somebody say that? Because we would, you know what I mean? Somebody said, well, I, but yeah, I know I did that, but I, I really meant well. Well, Sometimes the Bible will tell on us, won't it? It'll just call us out and mess up, mess up my false logic. Right? It'll, false, it'll mess up my false... Well, I hear, hear, let me tell you what really happened. And we try to give this story, and God, and God just says, listen, would you just stop that? You know, you know who we often make excuses for? Other people. We give excuses for people because we don't want to... Um, take responsibility for if listen let me say it this way if there's somebody you know one of my people I often sometimes and I often do this people ask prayer for somebody and I ask the obvious to me it's an obvious question are they saved is that a, that's obvious we're in church we're mostly concerned about people's soul I want people to get well I do especially when I'm sick I want to get well you know when you're sick I want you to get well so you're back here with us right but when somebody's, what, what we're bringing up a, a concern about somebody and say, hey, are, are they saved? What's the main thing? And somebody will say, and, and I've had this through the years, it's, and sometimes I, I'm thinking, wow, this is where they say, my best friend is sick. My best friend has this, and, you know, and I, this has been my best friend in my whole life, you know, this, and I'll say, you know, and then I'll say, are they saved? And they'll say, I'm not really sure. I just want to let that kind of just set out there for a minute. You're not sure if your best friend is saved? Well, you know, they do, you know, so we, we like sometimes make, make excuses for folks so we don't have to then talk to them about the Lord. You want to you change a best friend into an enemy? <laughs> Tell them about Jesus. 
Amen. I'm trying to tell you how to win friends, you know, and no influence people. No, listen, I'm sorry it's like that. I really wish it, I wish telling people, by the way, can I say this to you in real honest, um, the, the best way to make a real friend is to lead them to Christ. Somebody knows Christ, they're going to be a, they're going to be a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. You know, it becomes somebody that's something. But there's this thing, the situation will want to make excuses. But the Lord is pretty, pretty clear on this. He said, the fruit that, that the, uh, the Lord was speaking of is that which comes out, of, out, out from man. We are known, or if I could say it this way, we're revealed by our own fruit, by the things that come out of our life. So a false profession will not produce good fruit that remains. We understand? So, so if I say I have faith, by saying I have faith does not produce good fruit, right? This is, this is the message, but a true profession, uh, possession of Christ, right? When I receive Christ, now He works in and through me, now good fruit comes out, not because I'm so great, but because He is in me and good fruit comes out. Amen? Y'all follow me? Good. Okay. So, so notice we talked about this last week a little bit and then we had to cut off Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, we, we find this, this example. Acts chapter 8 and, and the, this example, Acts chapter 8 and verse 9. It says, there, but there was a certain man called Simon which before time um, in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. You see how that started? He was bringing, uh, this is the way sorcery and trickery and deception works, is by making myself the great one. And then what ends up happening, did, did this man really have sorcery? Is, is, is there sorcery that happens? Is there some kind of, Thing, Satan is able to do some of these things. Okay, let's uh, not not. I mean, not the same as the Lord. We understand there was the the pharaohs and their their magicians could do some of the same thing, and then all of a sudden, oh, they couldn't do it anymore. Okay, so there's some things, and and you say, well, what all can he do? I don't want to get into all that. You know, <laughs> you know. But but here's the thing: that what what we find that it started with is he brought the attention to himself, and then the people in verse verse uh, nine uh, ten. It says, to whom they all gave heed from the, greatest, uh, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Notice, that's the big G, God. They were saying, it's an interesting thing when we find this, what they were saying is like, he's the one that's come from God. You know, so it tells us they were looking towards, they were looking towards God. And they said, man, this guy is so great. This is the problem. I, I want to say this is the problem with us lifting ourselves up. And making ourselves to be so like I'm the answer. Hey, you need help? You got to get it from me. Right? And this is kind of the sorcery. This is what Simon was doing. And he enjoyed that. And this is what's going on. And these people were looking to that. In verse 11. And to him they, they had regard because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. So we find Simon the sorcerer made a profession of faith. Right? Made a profession of faith. Uh, and it was, uh, it was made public. It was through, through, uh, through baptism. So he goes through, and then in verse 14, this is now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They sent unto, unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they which were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then, verse 17, laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. So, we find some fruit. Right? 
We find fruit that's coming out of his life. Now, we only have what the Bible gives us, right? We, well, you know, really what's meant, and we, we do this in our own lives. Well, what, I, what was meant, or what, but there's other things that we do. You know, maybe he, was, maybe he did other things. He was there. He went to church, right? And we, we, we kind of can have a tendency to do some of this stuff. And I know why we do it, because we just, we want to, I mean, I think we want to think good of people. We want to think the best. We don't want to think, well, I don't, we don't want to be going around. We're not trying to be fruit inspectors constantly. I don't know if they're saying this one. I don't think we ought to be in that business at all to try to always try to figure people out. This is really so we can, what we're talking about here is how to reveal what's in my own heart. Um, we, we see the fruit that's, that's in this man. And, and it, it particularly here was a desire um, to have power that, he could, that could be purchased with money. Hey, I got some money. I know y'all are poor preachers. <laughs> can, can, I, uh, can I be a deacon? You know, maybe can I do this? Could I do that, you know, or, or this, uh, I've, I've heard of this, I've not experienced this in, in ministry, I've been, but I've heard of this, you know, somebody, because they, 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 they're, they're wealthy and they give big offerings, give big tithes, that they now use that as a way to say, well, you know, this church couldn't really do without me, right? It kind of has this kind of thing, and I said, you know, um, if that's your spirit, this church ain't doing too well with you. You know, wouldn't it be bad if we, were, we, we served a God that needed our money? Yeah. No, we don't. Listen, it, but this is where he was thinking, because you know what he was doing? He was bringing, listen, here's the main thing. He was bringing what he had in the world, the world's way of thinking. He brought it into the church and into, to the, uh, into Christianity. He said, listen, that's how, that worked over here, because he liked what? Remember, we, what he liked is it was all about me power he bewitched people and he did this he, he liked having that that everybody thought he was great and he said man i could get that back again i could get the best of both worlds i could infiltrate this thing and who i could really uh, get this thing and, and it revealed it, it something didn't change in him it was the same thing look, look at verse 20 now verse 20 it says but peter said unto them uh, unto him thy money perish with thee because thou hast that Thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. So, listen, salvation doesn't make us a better version of our old self. We become a new person. Right? Salvation doesn't just make us a better version of ourself. You know, um, Tim Hewitt 2.0, the new, improved version. No, that's not what it does. It, it, listen, we become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become... It's just, you become unrecognizable. I don't even know who you are anymore. You used to be fun, right? I don't even know you anymore. You, you've, just, you've just changed. Thank you. That's, that should be the response. Well, you know, I'm really the same person. No, you're not. Don't, 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 don't try to dig back into that thing. I am different. Well, you know, you used to be fun. You used to, we used to spend time together. We used to do this. and you know, you used to, We used to go drinking and dancing. And we had a good time. You'd laugh at all my dirty jokes. Right? I know for a lot of us, it's like, man, that's a long time ago. I don't remember that. Amen. 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 <laughs> like, I don't remember. Was I like that? You were, well, some of us that, that got saved later in life, that it was like that. It was a big change, and, and uh, those kind of things happen. But it doesn't, we don't become a better version of ourselves. We become some, somebody different. It's just like a new creature. Listen, so Simon, the sorcerer here, he either did not understand the gospel. I, I want to give him, maybe he just didn't understand it. Or purpose, purposefully thought it could be manipulated. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't want to try to... We only got what the Bible gives us, right? We, we do, sometimes we step back and make a little conjecture here and there, but we don't know we, but what, his, what his attitude was. But what, what we do know is this. Peter said his heart wasn't right in the sight of God. That's what he said. He said this. He said, um, uh, the, verse 21, it says, he said, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. See, you, you ain't got nothing to do with this. You got no part in this thing. 
Um, he needed to repent. That fellow needed, needed to repent. Take, take a note right here. Um, often, often time the need, listen, listen what I'm going to say here to you, because this, this is where we get a little bit, it can get a little bit weird to us in how to deal with these things. Um, Oftentimes the need for a person that, that has made a false profession is not to redo salvation. Okay, so I'm using some terminology. Though. What do you mean redo salvation? It's weird. I know. I just kind of made that up. Uh, so, you know, when, when somebody comes and they're ignorant of Christ, they're ignorant of the gospel, we take them through the gospel message, right? We take them what it means to, to be that I'm a sinner, Right? I'm a sinner. Because of my sin, um, I'm, I'm separated from God. Right? Number three, this is the simple four-point version. Number three, uh, God, God made a way. Right? Jesus Christ came and uh, He commendeth His love toward us. And while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then the fourth thing, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So that's the, that's the simple four-point. By the way, when I say it's the simple four-point, it's, it's good. It's good. It's good, it's simple, it's, it's clear, and it's pre- precise, and we take some of these, and you don't really, I mean, I can, we can remember that without having to be a, a theologian, right? And it's simple, it's the simple plan of salvation, and so we, um, so when somebody makes a false profession, they already knew those things, maybe they've been in church for a while, maybe they've been around it, we, we don't need to go, well, you know, um, we're all sinners. You know, they're like, man, I've been in church for 20 years. You know, they, they know this. So what I'm, what I'm saying is when, when, um, when, when a person has made a false profession, we don't, need, we don't redo what they already know, right? I, I've, I've done this with people. There's a fellow, I, just matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to be doing their wedding in, in, in July, June, in this coming June. It's, this this fellow came into our church. Um, I think it was the second service he was there. Maybe the first, first or second, was the first service? First service, he comes in and um, he came to the invitation and he, he raised his hand, wanted to be, he came down to the altar. I said, you know, what you come forward for? He said, hey, I, I want to be saved. I said, okay, I took him back there and I started talking. He already knew all this stuff. He already knew the gospel. You know, you know, we're all, oh yeah, yeah, we're all, you know, you, you know that because of that, we're, yeah, I know we're separated from you. <laughs> it's just all the things. And I'm like, um, yeah, sometimes you could get like, well, uh, uh, what else do I tell them? Let me think of some other really smart things to tell you. No, no, he already knew the things. See, here's what happens. We don't really need to redo salvation in that sense. What they, what they, they already know the gospel. If I'm making that assumption, they've already been preached and they know the gospel. What they need to do is repent of keeping their trust in themselves instead of Christ. See, see, a false profession comes out of this is, yeah, I hear that thing, but I can still do it. Some folks get in church, they've been in church. I, I mean, I know people have been in church, and I, you've heard me say this before already. I mean, this is, I think this is my two-month two anniversary today. Doesn't it seem like I've been here like six months? or <laughs> Feels like it. I mean, in a good way. Uh, in a good way. Uh, it is good. I don't. The um, so this this situation we, we we get we find find in this thing is is people sometimes been in, I've I've heard people come into church and and been in church been been saved been been serving God teaching Sunday school deacon pastors wife different things and all of a sudden one day they get saved. It's not that all of a sudden the gospel message got to their mind. Oh oh, I need to trust Christ. No. No, what happened is what they had been doing all along is trusting me to be what I'm supposed to be. You say, why, why is that? Why, maybe they've heard it. Why do they? I, I don't know, because there's a spiritual transaction. Remember I started, there's a, there's a transaction between me and God, and a lot of times it becomes, I'm going to be what I'm supposed to be. I'm watching other folk. They dress like that. Okay, I'm going to dress like that. They talk like that. I'm going to talk like that. That's what they do. I'm going to do what they do. By the way, nothing wrong with that. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So, but sometimes we never really get that people don't get that there's this place of, I want to do what, I, I, I want to trust God. I want to trust Jesus Christ. And, and so what we do is what we need to find is this per- person needs to come to the place to repent 
and say, God, I, I've been trusting me in all this. I've been trusting me, and I, I, I'm done. Folks, I, I've seen folks in church the whole life. They've never seen God do anything. They've never seen God do anything interesting in their life. Everything that God's ever done in their life, it could have done. It, the, the same thing could have said. Been, uh, listen to what I'm saying. It could have been said if they had never got saved. Yeah, God's been good to me. How? Just, it's good. Life's good. Just God's been good. And you're like, well, like how? Well, just, you know, I'm here. I'm breathing, aren't I? All right, okay. Well, you can be without Christ and say all those things. And so there's a point sometimes that folks will find that. So what often happens is that a church-going kid or adult follows with the plan as a good Christian, but they never really put their trust in Christ. Uh, some have, have realized this long down the road of their lives. Long down the road. They, they revealed, watch this, by the fruit in their own life and the conviction of the Holy Spirit. See, this is what the Lord was talking about, that the fruit reveals something is, is, is missing in my life. What's coming out of my life isn't the things of God. And, and so, so this man, we're talking about Simon the sorcerer, this man was still in bondage to sin. Verse 23 says this, For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. He had never been set free through salvation. Listen, let's, let's go back to James. Let's go back into James. And so we find this, this kind of situation. And if it happened once, it's happened other times, right? This, isn't, this has been going on through uh, since, you, you know, the early days uh, of the church, right? So, again, chapter two, James chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man... Say he hath faith and have not works. Can faith save him? So really, here's the question. Number two, what good is it? What good is it? What good is it to say you have something that you don't have? Yeah, at home I have this really awesome car. It can go faster than your cars, right? All right, let's go race. Well, okay, I don't really have it. You know, what good did it do me to say I have it? You see, what good does it say you have something that you don't have? Um, it, it's, it's no good at all. It's, it's pointless to say I have something that I don't have. It's, it's, actually, it's actually, though, it can also be destructive in, in this case. So this, can saying you have faith when you don't have faith, can that save you? You see, this is what James is getting at. Can, is, is by saying... You have faith, but there's no, there's no possession of Christ. You don't really, you've never really followed the Lord. You've said it. So, so what doth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and hath not works, can faith save him? And, and, and when we're talking about works, this, where this gets a little sticky for us sometimes as Baptists, we don't like this. I mean, not that we don't like this, it gets a little, little yucky. Is we're like, well, that's a work salvation then. No, no. No, and this is where this is where sometimes our theology can get in way. It, it, our theology can get in the way of the truth of the Bible. <laughs> you know, we're like, well, I don't think that's right because you know. So here's what he said. Listen, we don't have to. We don't have to listen. God's word isn't gonna isn't trying to mix us up, right? Sometimes our own theology will try to mix us up, but the the if we get our theology from the word of God, we'll be okay. He's not saying. Um, if you're not working, you're not saved. Well, I have to keep doing this if I'm going to be saved. No, no, it's not what he's saying. He's saying, really, he's saying this. If you're a good tree, good fruit's going to come out of it. And, and if you don't have good fruit, then you're not a good tree. And, and that's, that's really all this is talking about. If you don't have the works that, that revealed what you are, something's wrong. And so, can, can saying you have faith when you don't have faith save you? No, absolutely not. Saying, making a profession is not salvation. This is what James is getting to. It's, not, it's, 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 it's point, no good. Just saying something. This, I, I don't, I'm really um, hesitant of when somebody comes forward and says, you know, I want to be saved, and they, and they lead them. You know, and somebody, you know, they, they come and they make a profession. I, I'm a little hesitant of saying, they got saved today. 
You say, well, preacher, you just need to get a little more excited about it. Well, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, we, we, there's a seed planted. They, they said they... Uh, um, I don't know. And by the way, I'm not saying they're not. I'm, not I'm, I'm glad that they came forward and made a profession. Amen? That, that's exciting. I like to see that. I, I'm excited about that. When somebody will say, listen, I profess Christ as my Savior, I'm excited that they've got that far, that they, God brought them to that place. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. But I don't know whether it's what James is talking about or, or, or whether it's, you know, what happened in my life, right? Uh, and so, so I'm a little hesitant. I like to say, you know, they made a profession of faith. Praise the Lord. Praise, and that is a, that's a praise the Lord. Somebody's made a profession of faith. That Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And it's a great, wonderful thing. And, and we ought to be excited about that. We ought to be excited about that. But there's a warning here um, that is directly connected to how we treat people in respect of persons. Remember that? Remember the context? We're talking about how we treat people. It's what he's been dealing with. And, and, and the beginning of this chapter is talking about how we treat and, and not to be a respecter of persons. Matter of fact, he said, if you're, you're a, a respecter of persons, you've, you've, uh, you, you've sinned, you've broken the law, right? Uh, wait, what? So, so listen, the Lord is super serious about that thing. God is serious about how we treat one another. Keep in context of this whole message he's dealing with here. If we say we have faith, watch this. If we say we have faith, but have a respect of persons, we don't have what we think. So somebody said, your religion is vain, right? He talked about that. He's trying to deal with this thing. See, see what happens when we kind of keep this together? We kind of, wow, that's what he's dealing with. It's, um, this is why it is called the royal law. It's at the very pinnacle of who we are in Christ. Look back there in verse 8, chapter 2, verse 8. He says, if ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Listen, he's calling it the royal law. I mean, if I'm thinking the royal law, I'm thinking of very, very important. It's, it's the top, right? It's, it's, it's way up there at the top of things. So here's an illustration for us to think on. All right, look at, we're in James chapter 2, verse, verse 15. Here's just an, an illustration he's going to give us. So, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, okay, so what we say is this, uh, they, they don't have the clothes that they need or the housing that they need or they're exposed, not necessarily naked naked, but they, uh, they, they have a need is what we're talking about or, they have, or they're, or they're uh, destitute of daily food. Verse 16, And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? So, is your pronouncement, be warm and filled, is that going to give them any warming or any feeling? Hey, best of luck. Thinking about you. Be warm and filled. Hope it goes well for you. Thanks. That's a blessing. You thinking about me like that just makes me feel so much warmer already. I'm, I'm not even hungry anymore. <laughs> See what I'm saying? He, he said, did, did it profit anything? Did, did it, did, you know, what did it, uh, what, what did it do? Is, is, there, is there any, any value in that thing? And, and that's what he's, he's dealing with. Are you going to be any better for this? Are they going to be any better for the sake of your statement? The question for us to consider here is, what doth it profit? So what's the answer? Hey, um, at least we say this. You ever, you ever, you ever heard this? Hey, um, at least they're going to church somewhere. It's better than not going at all. It's what we say. Watch this, though. It's what we say. Is it, though? Is, is making an empty profession better than not making one at all? Yeah, no, no, I, I'm saved, I'm saved. Oh, well, praise the Lord. Is that better? Is it better to make a profession and not have a possession than to not make one? What does it profit? What's the value? What's the value of saying, matter of fact, there's none. There's no value. Matter of fact, it could be, if, is telling somebody, hey, you know, go be warm and field. Is there any value in this? Is there any, what, what, what does it profit? 
it's, it's, uh, there's something, list, has it really profited them at all? Um, or does it just make us feel better? Makes us feel better. I, 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 think, I think it would behoove us to stop making that kind of statement. The kind of statement that says, well, at least they go to church somewhere. So if that somewhere was uh, to uh, Pentecostal church or Catholic church, or um, a, uh, you know, the Mormon church where Jesus and Lucifer are brothers, right? Uh, a Seventh-day Adventist church where they still follow, believe that we follow the law, the Old Testament. Well, at least they're going somewhere. Would, would you say, hey, at least they're listening to Simon the Sorcerer? Because he is a messenger of God, right? At least they're... You see what I'm saying? You know, sometimes we, we will say something like, well, at least they're going somewhere. I, I would rather, listen, as a pastor, I would almost any day of the week rather somebody come in here and know nothing about things of God than somebody that's mixed up with all this stuff out there. Much easier to deal with. Um, when somebody knows nothing, you don't have to unteach false teaching, right? But when they have some of this corruption... That Simon the Sorcerer, other people have kind of put in their head, you got to say, hey, here's what's wrong. They're like, no, this is, really, you know what, because this is some really good people over there. There are really good people over there. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. There's some really good folks out over there. There's some really good folks at other places. And, and some places aren't, aren't terrible. Don't, don't misunderstand. This is the only place you can get saved. That's not what I'm saying. There's other places out there that are. But there's other places, not so much so. You go to a place that's nothing but a rock concert and a a feel-good place, and you come walking out of there, <laughs> that was fun, and say, yeah, I'm with Jesus. You know, we're just Christians because we had fun. Man, try to tell them, no, being saved isn't about fun. It's miserable. No, I mean, you know, you have to, I mean, it kind of can be confusing. So listen, it, it behoove us to stop making that kind of statement that, well, at least they're doing this, or at least they're doing that. At least they're doing this. Listen, it, it isn't profiting anyone. If we believe they are saved, listen, what I'm going to say to you here. If we believe that they're saved and, and in a place where a saved person ought to be, then let's just leave it there and, and get rid of the, the at least. Here's what I mean by that. Yeah, they're saved, but yeah, they're in this, this church with a woman homosexual pastor. So that's kind of bad. But they're saved. Really? Would a saved person... Would, you, would a saved person be in that kind of place? I mean, there's, there's a few verses that kind of would help us about that, right? We had a, we had a deal at our church, and there was a, a homosexual woman pastor that came in to, to see, come to this conference. And uh, you're thinking, wow, that, I mean, just, I mean, she's already, you know, just, just I thought, man, I'm glad, I'm glad some folks are over there at her church. Said no Baptist ever, yeah. Right? What, what's wrong with this? We wouldn't say, well, at least they're in... Which, you know what I'm saying? You, you follow my, 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 my thinking here? Let's don't get in... Well, what is that profit? Well, at least they're there rather than out in the world. I, I mean, I, listen, is... What is... This is, this is a sticky area. What, what is worse? Is living in sin worse or living in deception? Would I rather see somebody in sin that they can get saved from, they can realize that they're in... Or somebody that's in a place of deception and on their way to hell and don't realize it. I don't, you know. Listen, it, it just, it, it, if somebody's in a place where, listen, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, there's somebody, they're hearing the gospel. It's not like us. Maybe they're using a different version. Maybe they're doing this. Maybe they're, but, but you know what? They're, they're saved and they're reaching people for Jesus. Let's just leave it at they're saved. Amen. Not at least they're, you know, going. But if they're not, then let's, let's quit saying that because if it's a place that um, they shouldn't be going as a child of God, if the Spirit of God... I mean, imagine if the Spirit of God is dwelling in you and you're hanging out at a bar every night. Just think about that. Is the Spirit of God wanting to get up out of there? I mean, constantly convicted. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. So if we're at a place that's not where God would want us to be, we've got to think it's not going to be comfortable. Or he's not there. I know it's a little tougher. It's a little tougher to, to, 
Because I don't, I don't want to thank anybody that says they're saved, not saved. It's not for me to do. It's for them to figure out this. God, God shows us this. What, what does it profit it? Uh, verse 17, he says this. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is what? Dead. So a faith that doesn't produce the fruit of following Christ is dead. If it's dead, can I say this? If it's dead, it didn't die. It means it was never alive. You see, well, once we're saved, we don't get unsaved. So if, if, it, if it's a faith that's, that's dead, it means it was never alive. It was never alive there. Uh, we don't produce fruit so that, can, so that we can become a... Listen, we don't produce fruit so that we can become a fruit tree. Right? I'm going to start producing some, some apples so I can become an apple tree. No, that doesn't make sense. Uh, when we are a fruit tree, we will produce fruit. Um, if there's no fruit coming, we reveal that we're not a fruit tree at all and never were one. Just because at some point someone had leaves doesn't mean fruit will come. See, see, this is what happens sometimes. Somebody has some leaves, you know, they start coming to church, they're happy, they're fellowshipping, they're, you know, they're, they're doing stuff at church, they're coming, they're like, man, these, they're, they're, they're saved, look at, they got fruit. No, that's not fruit, that's leaves. That's, that's, they're, they're following along with what other, fo- by the way, we ought to have leaves. Amen? We ought to have leaves. We ought to look like that. Nothing wrong with that. But if there's never any fruit, that's our illustration of what, what a believer or a follower of Christ looks like. What he's talking about, James is dealing with this. Listen, we, we don't find this kind of passage a lot in the Scriptures. We, we don't. Um, but, but we find it sometimes here, and God wants us to deal with it. He doesn't, he doesn't deal with this all the time. I don't think we need to live in a place of constantly questioning people's salvation. I don't think that's what this is about. We don't find him constantly doing this in, in the Scriptures. But if we find it, there's a warning here. For any, any, who is he talking to? He was talking to those that are in here. Check yourself, right? Check ourselves. What is going on in my life? And God, what, look at me. Not, I knew them. <laughs> Cutting our eyes, folks over there. I didn't, I didn't think they were saved anyway. You know, that was preacher was right. No, that's not what I'm saying. We're, we're, it's about ourselves. Father, I pray that you'd help us today. Lord, pray that you'd help us to take your truth. Your word, we'd apply it. Lord, we'd let it uh, simmer and, and uh, Lord, be, be part of, uh, of our thinking and our desire, and our hope. Lord, I pray that you do a work in our lives. Use, use your word to help us to be what we need to be. And we'll thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen.